But all this leads basically to more central bank intervention, more money printing, right? More more injection of liquidity into markets and basically in uh, putting more units of dollars out there, you know, bidding up prices and increasing the price of things. And so eventually, ultimately, it will result in a higher market. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a historic day. It is March 10th, 2020. It is a Monday. And this is the video log that takes 30,000 to a million. <coughs> <coughs> Since last time I talked to you, I'm down like $10,000. Um, it's ridiculous. So quite a big of a loss, quite a bit of a loss. Um, about as much as the markets and the reason being the reason I'm not beating the markets is a because I'm in riskier stuff and two and B um, is because I went I, I ran through all my dry powder uh, dry powder for those of you who don't know just means cash on the sidelines if you remember just a few weeks ago I was sitting pretty I had some bonds I had twenty five thousand dollars of cash ready to go into whatever I needed. Um, I was sitting at 80 some $6,000 on my account. And <clears throat> I was set, I was ready for a downturn. If you go back like five, 10 episodes or whatever, I was ready. I wanted to buy in um, and be careful what you wish for, right? What happened was, uh, I got a little bit too greedy in the beginning, so I saw a few percentage drops, and I thought, oh, it might be a good idea to add some money, and, um, you know, invest in some stuff, sell some puts, do whatever. And so I started getting in. By the time the markets dropped down 10%, I, has, I had already drawn through my dry powder. And now, the next week, the market drops another 10%, and I'm out of money. I, I don't have anything else to invest. So what I end up doing is just reshuffling some stocks and trying to you know, scrape some money from my back pocket and invest it into my bank account so I can put some in there. Um, I don't want to touch, you know, um, my other accounts. Um, one of them's been doing okay uh, because I mainly have a bunch of like gold, silver stuff in there. And so that's been holding up. In fact, it's the only thing that's been holding up now is gold, not even silver, uh, not even the miners. And so, you know, thankfully I do have some physical gold. So don't worry about it. If things go sour, like I'll be okay. And I hope you guys are okay too. I'm sure some of you are suffering a lot more than I am. Even if you see the scary chart that I'm about to show you. Currently, I'm sitting at 72,475. Um, the low of today was actually around 71,600. So pretty low. And this is for the week, I'm down 14%, $11,392. These figures sound pretty big. And on the month, I'm down 14,500 or 16.63%. Now, if you're wondering how that compares to the S&P 500 uh, on the month chart, here is SPY, the SPDR S&P 500 exchange traded fund. And this is the month chart. It's at 15.78. So losing to the market by a little bit. But um, it's it's a bloodbath. I was definitely winning uh, up until the last few days, until things went really sour. So there's a few things that I hadn't really thought about, and it's always things that hit you out of left side, right? By the way, this seventy-two thousand is with the additional two thousand dollars that I put in um, in order to buy some stuff. I'll show you what I bought in a second. And otherwise, it would have been at like 70000 So a big loss there. Uh, I'm still up on the year by a couple percent on the year chart, not on the year, meaning since the beginning of this year. Obviously, I'm down as well as every other market out there. And so, uh, well, let me show you what I bought, right? So I bought this um, Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, okay? Um, some energy transfer. Um, because Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, I'm, <laughs> believe it or not, I'm actually up $37 in Royal Caribbean. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? It's because I just picked it up at the bottom, but it still might keep dropping. You never know. 
but uh, I was just looking at this right over here where it's plus 11% at 134 and now it's minus 58% at 50 so that's like 70% drop so when something drops 70% and it's a nice sound company um, it's time to buy for me anyways because this company is not only are the losses temporary and might they might suffer a little bit in interest they might have to take some loans out from the bank they have really good credit by the way Royal Caribbean by the way none of this is financial advice don't copy what I'm doing make sure you do your own research and due diligence and um, if you're not sure what you're doing or even if you're sure not about what you're doing consult with a financial advisor um, there's risk and you can lose all your money in the market like you can see right now there's a lot of risk and you can lose maybe it's a little post fact but anyway you can lose a lot of money in the market, as you can see, <laughs> even more than I'm doing. I used to be more hedged. Now I'm, you know, I'm pretty. Um, I've turned pretty bullish, which is probably the wrong time to do it. Um, so here's some things that I've been missing. Okay. What I'm missing is kind of the domino effect of a debt in the system. So I thought, you know, the, the quicker this thing resolves itself, the quicker things go back to normal, um, you know, any kind of vaccine that might or might not be developed um, will certainly calm the markets. Any kind of medical advance will calm the markets a little bit. Things might resume to the way they're going. And if that happens, and with this recent oil crash down, at one point I checked, it was down at like $27 this morning. And um, that's like a 40 some percent, 43 percent drop in like one morning. So that's a really big, enormous drop for oil for such a major globally, economically, global economic driving commodity. I mean, it's it's probably the most important commodity out there, and it dropped by forty percent. But that should have quite a few effects. Okay, so what are some effects of this? Um, well, first of all, all of the oil producers in the United States come to basically a halt. Um, very few will survive. I think the average producing price for oil is probably somewhere in the 70s even maybe, but 60s for sure. It's very high. And so if something costs you $60, $70 to produce and you're selling it at $27, $30, that's not a very profitable business model. Okay, You should probably stop doing that. And this is what the market's telling you. Now, if you're wondering what caused all this, the word on the street is that um, during the OPEC meeting, oil producing nations, um, organization, whatever, it's kind of like a, the, cart, the oil cartel countries, um, they were thinking of doing a production cut in order to stabilize the prices a little bit. Okay, so they wanted to get everybody in there and they sat down on the table with Russia and Apparently, what had happened is that uh, Russia refused because it said it can't afford it, whatever excuse kind of it, it did. So Putin basically said, no, we're going to keep producing oil and keep dumping it on the market at whatever price, even though the price was softening due to the virus issue and whatnot. Um, and the Saudis got pissed off and they said, well, that's fine. We're actually going to increase produ production then. And so that's double the trouble right russia is not stopping and uh, saudi arabia is going to produce more <laughs> apparently and so this cartel thing is basically coming to an end um but one thing that might happen as a result for the of this is the u.s market goes bust right the u.s producer go bust and then uh saudi arabia and russia reclaim market share and Saudi Arabia will probably reclaim even more market share than Russia uh, because they can they produce at even uh, a smaller price per barrel than Russia. Um, I'm not exactly sure on the numbers. Somebody can correct me if you know more about this this market than I. But um, I'm guessing Saudi Arabia produces somewhere in the 20s, and Russia probably produces somewhere in the 30s. But I don't know. I'm just kind of guessing based on figures that I've seen a long time ago. So if you know more about this, please let me know. But other uh, factors that might happen here is that not only are the oil producing companies in the U.S., the Shell, the Revolution, all that come to an end, but the banks that are financing them and the pension funds that hold their debt 
they might be in big trouble too. And you've seen a lot of the financials go down. That's that's part of the whole deal here. Um, it's because of they're afraid of risks like this. It's happened one time. I forget what year it was, uh, but the banks were also under a lot of pressure because of similar issues. Well, this is the real deal now, right? The, the oil price is so low that it's virtually like guaranteed. The longer it stays at this price, you know, anybody who has to lock in contracts, I mean, they're toast, right? If you don't have your contracts locked in for a certain kind of price, if you don't, if you haven't been playing the future markets right. Your company's gone, and, 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 and if this persists for like six months or a year, then all of the production virtually uh, ceases to exist. So that's the situation, right? Banks, uh, oil producers, um, we're going to become a oil importing nation again, we meaning the United States. Um, since this is where I'm based, that's why I say that. I realize a lot of you can, might be international viewers, but... That's what's happening, and it's real. Um, as far as what I'm doing coming in is I'm trying to just scoop up as many deals as I can. Like, I know that this might be a protracted recession. I know that the market might be, you know, going down for an extended period of time, Instead, especially since I myself have predicted, if you go back like 100 or 200 <laughs> episodes, I mentioned that uh, one of the premises of investing into the markets over the next 10 years that I have is that it's going to be virtually a sideways grind with a lot of volatility, but it's going to be a sideways market for the next 10 years, not counting in inflation, right? So what does that mean without inflation? What that means is that um, inflation is like, let's say, 2% per year or something like that, maybe less or more, maybe a lot more later. But the market is going to travel sideways discounting inflation. So, for example, if the market is at 3000 this year and it's 3060 um, or whatever next year, right? It's basically unchanged because of the discount inflation rate. Do you see what I'm saying? So, that's how it works. So even though it might rise nominally, it probably will not rise in real value, which was my prediction. But we're only two years into it since uh, I made that call. Um, and like a year and a half since I'm, I've been making these videos. So we'll see if that persists. Now, obviously selling uh, puts and calls is the strategy to take advantage of the sideways market. And I made like five videos about that. And so I continue to do it. Obviously, today is a big day and the account takes a big hit. I am I do profit more of uh, the upside and the down, than the downside. Um, I just scoop things up on the downside and sell them on the upside. That's how it's going to go. So, <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's still pretty rough, though. Anyway, trying to scoop up some deals. But I'm just out of cash. Like, I don't, anything below this, I'm going to just have to try to ride out. Um, but yeah, let's go back to the Royal Caribbean cruise line here. Cruise liner. Look at the five year chart of this thing. Isn't that amazing? What do you think about this chart? Look at this 135 plus 70%, 50 minus 36. That's <laughs> 100 and some percent difference. I don't know how to calculate it exactly, but. It's a pretty massive thing. Um, look at this figure right here, though. Dividend yield, right? Pretty high dividend yield. Um, price to earnings ratio is pretty Im impressive, 7.26. In fact, let me see something. I think it might be actually different on the Robinhood uh, app for some reason. Let me see here. Rubber, Royal Caribbean. Four point no same. All right, no, never mind. I was looking at a different company. Okay, four point eight, solid, and seven point two six. Now that's gonna drop because I don't think these figures are updated. So that dividend yield is gonna skyrocket, and price to earnings ratio is gonna drop. So this uh, company is gonna look real attractive. From what I understand, uh, Royal Caribbean, if things were normal, they'd be making like. 
ten dollars per share in earnings, putting their PE ratio at like five, uh, which is and it's insane, insanely good, especially for a company with this good of a rating, credit rating, and this good of a standing um, in the investment community. So I'm pre I, I just couldn't n not buy it, right? I had to buy it. So that's why I've been. Um, also, I sold some pussy on energy transfer, and I bought some more Apple stock. Um, Apple has been obviously a very losing trade so far, but it's actually holding up a little bit stronger than I thought, because usually it goes up, down more than the market does. But in this case, it's holding up pretty well relative to the market. Um, I'm actually somehow still amazingly up, even though I purchased a lot of shares. 316 on the share side of it. I have now 50 shares instead of 20 or whatever I had. And I have this put contract that I'm losing $2,000 on right now that I sold last week. And now it's worth 5,600 instead of 3,600 and something. So definitely losing on that. But the hope is that by January 15th next year, things will have reverted back to normal and all that liability will have been erased. Another big move I made, that's a big update here, is this Disney contract. I sold a $110 put expiring January 1st, January, I'm sorry, 15th again. And that is looking okay so far. Um, I'm only really down $700 on that, 66, 67%, so okay. It's a small loss compared to the Apple contract. And hopefully all of that liability here will also disappear once January 15th comes around. I think it's another strong company that could you that is going to get a lift out of the recovery. Basically, I'm set for the market to go back up, right? I was ready for the market to go back down. Now I'm ready for it to bounce back up. This is the Disney, the five-year Disney chart. It's been at this level, you know, on March 22nd, 2019, probably before they came out with their streaming service, you know. So now it's about the same level. So it hasn't really lost that much. It's holding up relatively strong compared to a lot of these companies out there. So, I mean, 27% down. <laughs> But some of these companies have taken an absolute beating, you know, over the month. It's crazy. Uh, another little tiny buy, I wish I would have had more money, is a company that I wanted to buy for a long time, which is Visa. And I never really got the opportunity because I hate buying exponential slopes like these. All right, like look at this exponential slope here. So I was waiting for a pullback in order to buy a few shares. And that's exactly what happened. I only bought two. I'm probably gonna buy more if I have the money, but I really don't. I released some collateral, which is great, but um, it looks like I don't really have that much buying power anymore. So we'll see what happens. That buying power is gonna keep decreasing as the uh, value of my account keeps going down, so. All right. I've updated you pretty much on everything. I also shorted the VIX. We'll see if that pans out over the next couple of weeks. Hopefully things come down and I'm able to make a little bit of cash. Uh, but we'll see. It's been a very, very bloody and volatile week or two. It's um, historic. And I was mildly unprepared. I thought I was prepared, but I wasn't prepared for something as deep. And uh, it looks to have a lot of knock-on effects, a lot of dominoes in place. You know, um, a lot of pension funds hold those the, that oil debt, and if the oil companies aren't going going to bankruptcy, it's going to hurt the banks. It's going to hurt the pension funds. Who knows what they're going to have to do? They're going to have to get a bailout. But all this leads basically to more central bank intervention, more money printing, right? More more injection of liquidity into markets, and basically in uh, putting more units of dollars out there, you know, bidding up prices and increasing the price of things. And so eventually, ultimately, it will result in a higher market. And wow, maybe 
I will put that in the beginning of the video. <laughs> Even though I'm super like bearish maybe in the short term, but I don't know, it might rebound. I really don't know what's going on at this point. I just don't want to, you know, pull out some kind of bearish move out here when we could be close to a rebound. Um, but what I am prepared for is writing it out. I'm prepared for writing this thing out, even if it takes a few years. Okay, I won't be alone in it. Um, and I think I'm positioned really well for things to go up, even if they go up slowly, and even if they go down a little bit before they go up. If market loses another 10%, 20% from here, I'm definitely gonna be feeling the pain. Unless uh, precious metals mining stocks actually decide to turn up with the gold price, then I'll be able to actually fund this account with uh, the winnings of my precious metals account and um, balance this thing out. But as it stands right now, there's a lot of pain, a lot of pain. <laughs> So, if you managed to watch the entire video, uh, let me know in the comments below by typing a lot of pain. <laughs> Alright? Peace out. That's it for now.